Hello Melbourne, uh, my name is Paul Borge and I'm Nino Riccio and um, thanks very much for inviting us along to the uh, second annual SA Symposium uh, where um, coming from the London College of Music at the University of West London today um, and we're going to be talking about performance practice using new modular instruments. So the birth of the modern uh, synthesizer is well documented and generally attributed to the work of two North American electronics engineers during the 1960s, Don Buckler and Bob Moog. And working concurrently, although entirely independent of each other, they brought together many of the electronic components that we now associate with synthesizer architecture and in a format that offered new possibilities for sonic expression and sound design. Prior to the launch of the Minimoog Model D in 1971, the first single integrated synthesizer, these instruments were mostly modular devices, uh, requiring the user to physically connect component parts using patch cables to generate interesting and expressive sound synthesis. And like a number of their early 20th century predecessors, that is Cahill, Leon Theremin and others, they deployed very contrasting user interfaces. And the choices that Don Buckler and Bob Moog made had a profound impact upon how electronic music would be both performed and received by an audience. While Bob Moog's instruments proved to be commercially viable in the mainstream, Don Buckler's designs remained marginal and on the fringes of popular music culture. And one of the most significant differences between the Moog and Buckler systems was Moog's ultimate decision to use a well-tempered clavier or piano-style keyboard as a performance interface while Buckler opted for a more esoteric approach, using touch-sensitive control plates for some of his designs. So the style and music uh, and subsequent creative output resulting from these two very differing approaches is no more clearly demonstrated than in the work of Wendy Carlos and her 1968 recording Switched on Bark, which is a, a keyboard-based electronic reimagining of the uh, works of J.S. Bach which contrasts with Morton Subotnik's 1967 musical abstract, Silver Apples of the Moon, a bold avant-garde sonic adventure in musical expression through new electronic means using one of Buckler's systems. Now, in recent years, there's been something of a resurgence of interest in the modular format, due in large part to the uh, compact Euro rack system introduced in 1996 by Dieter Dopfer. This new incarnation of the modular system allows for independent third-party manufacturers to develop new and experimental modules that draw both upon earlier concepts and design concepts while introducing digital signal processing and other new ideas to this traditionally analog format. Offering new horizons for electronic music making, we might now refer uh, to, this, uh, to this as the new modular instrument, and it presents an intox intoxicating mixture of both familiarity and innovative technology. Electronic musicians and performers are again drawn to the playful, transient and sometimes very frustrating experience of directing voltage through discrete electronic components in an effort to realise new and unique musical experiences, perhaps seeking liberation from the predefined ready-made culture of music production software. But the new modular instrument is perhaps not for those seeking a quick fix of electronic music, and nor will it be the go-to instrument for a producer maybe uh, briefed to deliver a piece of music to a specific brief and on a very tight deadline. Instead, long periods of thought and consideration are required to assemble and reassemble your instrument, along with repetitive practice and improvisation before achieving any musical or meaningful musical reward. After all, every musician must surely command mastery and control over their instrument of choice, and the modular synthesizer is no exception in this respect. First impressions are a mixture of fascination, uh, aesthetic appeal, and often intimidation. And as children, many of us are excited by the innate beauty of a musical instrument at rest, such as a piano or a violin. We feel the urge to pick it up, sit down, play, imagine, and even perform. But those early encounters often produce a mixture of discordant noise, inharmonious sound, and perhaps even the odd happy accident, if you're lucky. A first encounter with a modular synthesizer can be an equally enchanting experience, a familiar-looking suitcase of vintage design containing an array of twinkling comp electronic components with exotic names like Galleon Moons, Three Sisters, Dinky's Tycho, and Pamela's Workout. These names tell us nothing of their functionality. However, instead they draw in the curious and demand to be played with. But like attempting to blow a trumpet for the first time, early physical encounters with a modular often produce limited musical results, or sometimes no sound at all. And the prospect of performing live with such an instrument seems like a very ambitious goal indeed. 
Therefore, like learning to play any instrument, you begin by copying established gestures. You start to patch cables into sockets, you make connections and you find the path of least resistance. The central concept behind Mark Lehman's embodied music cognition paradigm is the idea that physical bodily gestures are key components of musical expression and that the, the body functions as a sort of mediating device between the subject, subjective musical intention and the situated physical experience or activity. Traditional acoustic and electroacoustic instruments such as guitars, violins, drums, piano forte and other keyboard instruments allow for musical expression through explicit physical exertion specific to the mechanics of the respective musical weapon of choice. These unique performance actions connect with established listener expectations based upon cultural experience and prior knowledge and we'll discuss how an audience might interpret gesture or indeed a lack of it later on. But for now we should briefly consider the stark contrast that exists between performing music on an acoustic instrument, as referred to here, and attempting musical expression through entirely digital or electronic means. Acoustic instruments require the performer to expertly excite a resonator to produce sound and pitch, and the relationship or definition between the control interface and the sound resonator is often somewhat blurred and unclear. However, the physical process required to control these instruments is both explicit and well established. After all, we know, all know how to play a guitar and we all know how to mimic a violin player. This is very different to performing with many digital musical instruments, which might be thought of as having a distinct input control, such as a computer keyboard, a mouse or control pad of some sort, which allow for analog performance information to be translated into sound via the associated subsystems. The physical performance here is often minimal, less obvious, and perhaps even mysterious to the observer. This idea, to a certain degree, might also extend to electronic music performed on a modular synthesizer, especially without the presence of a conventional black-and-white piano-style keyboard to offer clear and familiar cues. A brief review of social media, or a visit to a specialist convention hosted by and for the new modular community, and it immediately becomes apparent that the popular method of performance with a new modular instrument rarely involves the use of a conventional piano-style keyboard. Performers demonstrate the complexity of their patch with minimum physical gesture relying upon the use of onboard sequences and membrane contacts instead. And this style of performance, uh, or this style of performance approach, embraces the legacy of Don Buckler's designs and early proponents of his instruments, such as Susan Chiani, who in 1975 performed live concerts in New York exclusively using a Buckler System 200 and without the conventional use of a black and white keyboard. With a minimum level of physical gesture while offering some degree of visible action, such as patching cables, pushing buttons, turning controls, this type of performance practice challenges established conventions in music performance. And as such, it's difficult to place the performance practice associated with modular instruments into those definitions as referred to earlier. Instead, new modular instruments perhaps occupy a unique center ground between our established understanding of what it is to perform and engage with both acoustic and electronic music. Thank you, Paul. Liveness. The notion of live music performance has shifted with the increased use of technology. The composer and musicologist Simon Emerson asserts that the term live has moved beyond the physical action towards a model for living performance. 
Interpretation of live electronic music performance combines aspects of physical presence of performers and systems, the apparent intentions and choices of the performer, and what these mean in the context of what you mean to me, where I am, and whom I'm with. Personal and social presence, Emerson explains, is the key to how the listener accepts what they take from a performance and how the performers are interacting with technology. The meaning of the performance, therefore, is not restricted to the relationship between musicians or between musician and a new modular instrument. What we hear when listening to sound is informed, enhanced and altered by our other senses. Our senses work together to give us an amalgamated interpretation of our environment. Musicians performing with new modular instruments might be described as ringmasters. The performers join the audience in experiencing the sound produced by new modular instruments in an acoustically dislocated environment. Even though the performer may know technically how the sound has been produced, the audience may not. In the case of the performers and the audience, the mode of listening is different to that of watching a musician perform an acoustic instrument live on stage. Pierre Chauffeur referred to this mode of listening as reduced listening, where the listener focuses on the abstract properties of sounds such as amplitude, spectrum, morphology over time. All sounds have the potential to be interpreted according to their mimetic or abstract qualities. The acoustic situation presented by performing with new modular instruments is that they are perceived sonically in the same manner by the performers as they are by the audience. The new modular instruments are totally unfamiliar to the majority of people and are often considered devices that belong in a laboratory. When performing with new modular instruments, there is an assumption made by the audience that if someone is physically interacting with the system, which not even, uh, not even understood, puts it into a context where it becomes an instrument. However, when performing with new modular instruments, the number of physical gestures made by a performer that correspond in a transparent manner to an obvious change in the sound during the performance may be few or none. This apparent disconnect and unfamiliarity with how the performer is producing sound with a new modular instrument can lead to the listener perhaps disengaging with the live performance. This may have several consequences. Firstly, the listener may focus much more on the sound being produced and not concern themselves with the manner of its production. Secondly, the listener may focus more intently on the performer to find a conjugation between physical action or gesture and a sonic change, perhaps not considering the music more holistically. Thirdly, the listener may disengage and their mind wander to other things not related to the music they are hearing and seeing performed. This brings a perhaps more fundamental question of how the criteria for living for live performance has been changed by the manner of electronic music performance. There is no longer a clear demarcation in the established perceptual aesthetic continuum between listening to a recorded record and live music performance. Performing with new modular instruments creates more points within this continuum where the listener can choose to connect with performance at different perceptual levels, moving between them depending upon their desires of how to, con to connect with performers, the music or the technology. There are further questions intimated by this suggestion of how new modular instrument performances are received, such as how do the musicians want the audience to receive the performance? and how can musicians achieve this performance aesthetic. Every musician who uses new modular instruments and wishes to perform live with them may have a different intention of how they wish that performance to be experienced by the audience. Perhaps some musicians wish the audience to know that the performance is totally live and provide a more transparent aesthetic, whereas others may wish to put forward a more abstract or opaque performance. Marco Cicciliani, in his paper on electronic music performance practice, puts forward a method to evaluate the aesthetics of different performance practices in electronic music based upon different parameters of that practice and their impact on the aesthetic. He places these parameters into two groups. The first group includes the visibility and prominence of the performer's body and the correlation between physical gesture and sonic results and the transparency of that correlation. This first group of parameters he describes as part of the centripetal model, where the performer is central. The second group of parameters includes space, where the sound source either appears close to the performer, centred, or is omnipresent in the performance space, expanded. Sounds that seem to occur completely independently of any gesture, and whether there is any deliberate effort to hide the actions of the performer from the audience. The second group of parameters he describes as part of the centrifugal model, where the performer appears conducting or guiding and not a directly performing agent. 
This model for electronic music performance practice can help to guide musicians when performing with new modular instruments to create the aesthetic desired. As previously discussed, a new modular instrument often lacks a conventional input controller such as a MIDI keyboard. This immediately has a centrifugal effect of drawing attention away from the musician as the performance actor. A performer may feel they need to compensate for this by making overt gestures when adjusting a control on the instrument, which they know will have a clear and transparent correlation to a change in sonic output. This having a centripetal effect of increasing embodiment and apparent transparency. This is evidenced in performances by Colin Benders and VCO ADSR. Alternatively, a performer may wish to appear more detached from obvious sonic changes, thus exhibiting a different kind of control over the instrument that of the ringmaster or godfather, as evidenced by Kraftwerk and Robert Lowe. The traditional physical layout of a performance space where the musicians are facing the audience with their instruments in front of them inherently creates a centrifugal effect when using new modular instruments. The modular instrument usually appears to the audience as the back of a flight case or similar, with no clear view of the modules, but perhaps a glimpse of patch cables and the reflection of flashing lights for modules on the clothes or faces of the performer. Some performers have chosen to perform either perpendicular to the audience, such as Ulrich Schnauss, or as is the case with performers using the online broadcast platform Boiler Room with their backs to the audience. These positions allow the audience to gain a better view of the modular instrument and gestures of the performer, thus helping to create a more transparency in the performance. However, due to the unfamiliar and perhaps perplexing manner in which new modular instruments create sound, from the viewpoint of the layman audience, no amount of visual or embodied visual input may help to better inform them of what is taking place in a manner that enables for a comprehensible and transparent performance. There is also considerations regarding the style of music being created by performers that will impact upon the perception of the performance by the audience. For example, an ambient, noise or drone style of performance may encourage the audience to disengage from the live moment and to engage in a more deeper listening experience where they may wish to disconnect from their physical and social environment. This is in contrast to a beat-driven house, techno or trance performance where the audience can gain more from the shared social experience of being in an environment that Emerson terms as a living performance. Ultimately, the audience will decide for themselves individually how they wish to engage with performance, including use of new modular instruments, perhaps because of or in spite of the efforts of the performers to elicit a desired perceived level of liveness. Perhaps just the gestures of goodwill shown by the performer to prove that a new modular instrument is indeed making the music being heard in some form of real time is sufficient for an audience experiencing it. There's a great array of debate to be explored here regarding how new modular instruments uh, are disrupting the performance conventions established in Western music, including ideas around digital laptop-based music performance. Conventions developed to aid the perceived validity of music performance are now being challenged, not just by technology, presence, gesture, or the style of music, but by what can be considered as a truly live performance. Thank you.